My ex-wife tried to run me over when I caught her cheating, and then. The story of my life, especially the part about my marriage and its eventual collapse, has been a winding road of heartache, betrayal, and unexpected consequences. I never imagined that my life would take the kind of turn it did. But then again, no one ever really sees these things coming. It all began with the collapse of a relationship that had once seemed so promising. So full of potential. Now, looking back, I see it for what it was. A slow unraveling that ended in chaos and, in some ways, a sense of liberation. I met my ex-wife, Jessica, when we were in our late twenties. We both lived in a small town in the Midwest, where the pace of life was slow and steady, and everyone knew everyone else's business. She was the kind of woman who could light up a room with her smile. Full of energy and charm, I was drawn to her immediately. And before long, we were inseparable. I thought we had the kind of love people only dream about. The kind that could withstand anything life threw our way. In the beginning, things were good, really good. We had dreams and plans for our future. We talked about buying a house, starting a family, and building a life together. I worked a steady job. And Jessica had a job at a local boutique that she loved. We weren't rich, but we were happy. Or at least I thought we were. But over time, things started to change. It wasn't a sudden shift, but more of a gradual erosion. Jessica began spending more time out with friends, and I found myself alone at home more often than not. I told myself that it was normal, people change, relationships evolve, and maybe she just needed some space. But deep down, I knew something was wrong. The distance between us grew wider with each passing day, and the woman I had fallen in love with seemed to slip further and further away. Then, one day, I found out the truth. Jessica was cheating on me. She had been seeing someone else for months behind my back. And the weight of that betrayal hit me like a freight train. I had always thought that if something like this ever happened, I would know immediately. But the truth was that I had been blind to it. Maybe I didn't want to see it. Maybe I had been too focused on holding on to what we once had. Even though it had been slipping away for a long time. When I confronted her about it, things escalated quickly. What I expected to be a painful, but calm conversation, turned into something much more violent. Jessica denied everything at first, but when I showed her the proof, she flew into a rage. Her anger was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was as if the woman I had loved was replaced by someone I didn't recognize. She screamed at me, throwing insults and accusations as if I were the one who had done something wrong. And then, in a moment of pure fury, she did something I could never have imagined. After our confrontation, I went outside to clear my head, hoping the fresh air would help me process everything. But as I stood in our driveway, Jessica stormed out of the house, got into her car, and started the engine. At first, I thought she was leaving to cool off, but then she revved the engine. Her eyes locked on mine with a coldness that sent a chill down my spine. Before I could react, she slammed her foot on the gas and the car lurched forward. Heading straight for me, I barely had time to jump out of the way as the car sped past. Tires screeching as she swerved down the road. My heart was pounding, and I couldn't believe what had just happened. Jessica had tried to run me over. I stood there in shock, my mind racing. How had things gotten this bad? How had the woman I loved so deeply become capable of something like this? In that moment, everything became clear to me. Our marriage was over. There was no coming back from this. In the days that followed, I filed for divorce. It wasn't just because of the cheating. Although that had been the final straw. It was because I realized that Jessica had become someone I no longer recognized. Someone I no longer trusted. The woman I had once promised to spend my life with had turned into a stranger. And I knew I had to let her go. For both of our sakes. The divorce was messy. As divorces often are. Jessica refused to admit fault. Even though everyone in town knew what had happened. She played the victim. Telling anyone who would listen that I had driven her to her actions. That I was controlling. That I was to blame for her unhappiness. It was a bitter pill to swallow. Knowing that the person I had once loved so much could turn against me in such a cruel way. But eventually, the papers were signed, and we went our separate ways. For a while, I tried to move on with my life. But it wasn't easy. Everywhere I went, I felt the weight of what had happened pressing down on me. Friends and acquaintances would give me sympathetic looks. And I could hear the whispers behind my back. It was hard to escape the cloud of gossip that hung over me. But I did my best to keep my head down and focus on the future. As for Jessica, things didn't go so well for her after the divorce. She had always relied on me financially. And without my support, she struggled. Her boutique job wasn't enough to cover her bills. 
and she found herself in a tough spot. I heard through the grapevine that she had tried to reach out to friends and family for help. But most people had distanced themselves from her after the way things had ended between us. She was on her own now. And the reality of that hit her hard. For a while, she scraped by, taking on odd jobs and trying to make ends meet. But it became clear that she wasn't managing. I remember running into her once at the grocery store. Months after the divorce was finalized, she looked tired, worn down by the weight of everything that had happened. There was no anger in her eyes anymore. Just a quiet sadness. She didn't say much. And neither did I. We exchanged a few awkward pleasantries. And then she walked away, pushing her cart down the aisle. A shadow of the woman she had once been. It was hard to see her like that. Even after everything she had done, I had loved her once. And part of me still cared about her. Even though I knew I could never be with her again, I wanted to help her, to offer her some kind of support. But I knew it wasn't my place anymore. She had made her choices. And now she had to live with the consequences. Over time, I began to heal. I threw myself into my work, took up new hobbies, and reconnected with old friends. Slowly but surely, I started to rebuild my life. The scars from my marriage were still there, but they no longer defined me. I was moving forward, and for the first time in a long time, I felt a sense of peace. As for Jessica, I don't know what became of her in the end. I heard rumors that she had left town, that she was living with a distant relative somewhere, trying to start over. I hope she found some measure of happiness, or at the very least, peace with herself. But our paths had diverged, and I knew I would never see her again. Looking back on everything that happened, I realized that it was a turning point in my life. The betrayal, the anger, the near tragedy, it all forced me to confront things about myself and my relationship that I had been avoiding for far too long. It was painful, yes, but it was also necessary. Sometimes, the hardest experiences are the ones that teach us the most. I've learned a lot about love, trust, and the importance of standing up for yourself. I've learned that sometimes, people change in ways you can't predict, and that holding on to something toxic can do more harm than good. Most importantly, I've learned that I am stronger than I ever thought I could be. This chapter of my life is closed now, but the lessons it taught me will stay with me forever. I've moved on, but I'll never forget the woman who tried to run me over. Both literally and figuratively, and in a strange way. I'm grateful for it, because without that painful experience, I wouldn't be the person I am today. The months after the divorce brought an unexpected quiet to my life. It was a silence I hadn't known before. One that allowed me to reflect on the wreckage Jessica had left behind. After the confrontation, after the lawsuit and her eventual disappearance from town, I found myself at a crossroads. Life after the storm was calm. Yes, but in that calm. I was forced to examine the cracks in my past and how they had led me to this point. I threw myself into work, hoping to numb the lingering ache that Jessica's betrayal had carved into me. But work could only distract me for so long. The nights were the worst, coming home to a quiet, empty house, the faint echoes of what once was lingering in the walls. Every corner of the house reminded me of her. The memories, once sweet, now felt like weights pulling me down. The laughter in the kitchen, the lazy Sunday mornings, the quiet nights spent watching movies together. Those moments now felt distant, tainted by the knowledge that Jessica had been living a double life. They were remnants of a lie. I thought about the last time I saw her in that grocery store. Looking beaten down by life, it would be a lie to say I didn't still care. It wasn't in the way I once loved her, not the kind of love that could ever rebuild what was destroyed, but a small piece of my heart still ached for the woman I had believed in. Even though she had betrayed me, even though she had hurt me in ways I could never have imagined. I didn't want to see her suffer, but I also knew that it wasn't my responsibility anymore. I couldn't save her, I had to save myself. I started seeing a therapist, a decision that changed my life in ways I hadn't expected. I hadn't realized how much pain I had been carrying, not just from the marriage, but from before, the resentment of feeling ignored by my family growing up, the pressure to succeed, the silent expectations of who I was supposed to be. All of it had built up, shaping me into a person who didn't always stand up for himself. Who accepted things that should never have been tolerated. Jessica's betrayal wasn't just about her cheating. It was the final straw in a lifetime of feeling invisible. Of putting others first and neglecting myself. Therapy helped me see those patterns. To unravel the tangled mess that had been my life. Slowly, I began to rebuild my sense of self. I learned that I was allowed to take up space. That I deserved more than just surviving in a relationship built on lies. I deserved love, the real kind. 
not the fractured, conditional kind that Jessica had given me. I began to take care of myself in ways I hadn't before. I joined a gym, started eating better, and reconnected with old friends. I realized how isolated I had become during my marriage, how much I had withdrawn from the world in an effort to make things work with Jessica. But now, I was stepping out of that shadow, rediscovering parts of myself that had long been buried. It felt like coming up for air after being underwater for too long. And then, one day, out of the blue, I got a letter in the mail. It was from Jessica. My heart pounded as I stared at the envelope, unsure if I should open it. Part of me wanted to throw it away, to leave the past in the past. But the other part, the part that still needed closure, urged me to see what she had to say. I opened it, my hands trembling slightly as I unfolded the letter. Her handwriting was messy, like she had written it in a hurry. But the words were clear enough. Dear David, I don't know if you'll even read this, and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. I've been thinking about everything that happened, and I know I owe you an apology, not just for the cheating, but for everything. I'm not looking for forgiveness. I don't deserve that. I just wanted you to know that I'm sorry. I've been going through a lot since the divorce. Financially, emotionally, I've hit rock bottom. I guess that's karma for what I did to you. I lost myself along the way. David, I became someone I didn't even recognize. And I hurt you, the one person who always stood by me. I'll never forgive myself for that. I don't expect you to respond. And I don't expect this letter to change anything between us. I just wanted you to know that I regret it all. I hope, wherever you are, that you're happy. You deserve that, more than anyone. Take care, Jessica. I sat there for a long time. The letter resting in my lap as I stared out the window. It was the apology I had thought I wanted for so long. But now that I had it, I wasn't sure what to feel. Her words were raw, filled with regret, but they couldn't undo what had been done. They couldn't erase the pain she had caused or the damage she had left in her wake. But as I read her letter again, something shifted inside me. It wasn't forgiveness, exactly, but it was a kind of release. I had spent so long carrying the weight of her betrayal, the anger, the hurt, and now, for the first time, I felt like I could finally put it down. Jessica's apology didn't fix what had been broken, but it gave me the closure I didn't know I needed. I folded the letter and put it away in a drawer, deciding that it would be the last time I dwelled on the past. I wasn't going to let her have any more power over me. I wasn't going to let the memories of what we once were, what we could have been, consume me anymore. It was time to move on, to live my life fully, without the shadow of her betrayal hanging over me. The months that followed were some of the best of my life. I embraced my newfound independence, traveling to places I had always wanted to visit, trying new things, meeting new people. I started dating again, not seriously at first, but enough to remind myself that there was life beyond Jessica, that I was capable of loving and being loved in return. One day, as I stood on a beach watching the sun set over the ocean, I realized how far I had come. The man who had once been so broken by his ex-wife's betrayal was gone. In his place was someone stronger someone wiser, someone who had learned to value himself above all else. The story of my marriage, the betrayal, the anger, the pain, was no longer the defining chapter of my life. It was just one part of a much larger story, one that I was still writing. And as the sun dipped below the horizon, I knew that whatever came next, I would face it with the strength and resilience that I had earned through the hardest experience of my life. Jessica was a part of my past, but she no longer held power over my future. And that, I realized, was the greatest victory of all.